Welcome back everybody, this is Tyler Weeb from Pro Physique, and today we're gonna talk about calories versus macros. Right, welcome back everybody. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend doing it is whatever you're doing You're enjoying summer if you're on summer break, whatever it is. Hopefully you are having an awesome time uh, Before we get started, please make sure to hit that subscribe button greatly appreciate it Just so you're not missing out on any future content um, Today I want to talk about macros versus Calories. So this tends to be a question that I kind of get a little often from clients who are maybe a little bit newer to to flexible dieting or um, you know tracking their food. You know we've heard a lot about you know tracking calories and that's kind of it. Um, that tends to be kind of maybe the main thing that people do tend to hear about. You know something like Weight Watchers, which is absolutely massive. Um, you know the big emphasis on just kind of tracking calories. And so a lot of question that I'll get a lot of is kind of when I send off the macros, it's well, well what should be my calorie intake? Um, and I think there's a little bit of a disconnect between, um, you know, macros are calories. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't track calories. I think at certain points in maybe your journey, you know, tracking just calories is a great idea. Um, I know that this was something that I really utilized uh, post prep when you're hungry and you just want to eat everything in sight um, and you don't really care about the ratios of what your macros are uh, because you just want to eat. And so a great way to do it would be, you know, track your protein and then just try and hit the calories, whatever your calories might be. And you can fill that however you want. Or maybe if you're doing a little more intuitive eating um, where you're not necessarily really, you know, tracking quite diligently, but you're still keeping an eye on how much you are consuming. Again, hitting protein um, and then just hitting total calories. And then the fat and the carb ratio can be kind of however you make it up. As long as one isn't getting, you know, too low um, you know we there some ratios are still quite important making sure you are getting enough uh, fat in your diet or getting enough carbs in your diet to fuel your workouts um, to fuel your health with the fats um, you know hormones anything like that they are very important and so there isn't technically a you know calories versus macros which one is better um, I think that both can be used in various stages of your journey now if you do have a specific goal of you know whatever dieting um it's probably going to be the main thing like going into prep or something like that or, or just plain dieting um you know i think during a reverse it still can be quite important as well because you're if you want if you're looking to build muscle um, we typically really want to make sure that we're actually just tracking macros and not calories uh macros make up calories right and so with Protein, there is four calories per gram. With carbs, there's four calories per gram. And then fats, there's nine calories per gram. So you can see how carbs and protein, exact same amount of calories per gram of protein or carb. And then uh, fats do tend to be a little more dense where you are gonna get more calories per gram of fat. So that's why you tend to see fats obviously a lot lower uh, than carbohydrates. So why, are tra why is tracking macros more important than maybe tracking calories. Well, ratios do matter when it comes to, you know, I want to build muscle or I want to lose X amount of weight or I'm prepping. Uh, the ratios and the percentage breakdowns of each macronutrient are going to play vital factors into whatever that goal might be, right? So typically we'll always start with protein. That is always gonna be set first because that's probably, that's one, it's not really ever gonna change much um, unless you're kind of starting very low and we just need to bring that up a little bit further. But for the most part, protein it really isn't, it's, it's just not gonna change because there is a pretty much a limit on, you know, the, the cost benefit of, of, of protein. Uh, you can only, you know, just because a little bit is good, that, that doesn't mean more is better in, in this scenario and so, Minimum, we always want to make sure that we're getting about 0.8 grams, 0.7 maybe, but pretty much 0.8 grams per pound that someone weighs, right? That is kind of the minimum. That is what is going to help build muscle. This is what is going to help preserve muscle when you're dieting. Um, and protein tends to be a little more filling. And so if you can have a little more protein in your diet, 
you are tend you are going to tend to be a little more full after you eat that. And so where this I think really comes into play is when you are dieting or prepping. I really like having people on 1.2, you know, 1.3 depending on the person grams per pound. Uh, so as calories get lower, the more protein you have, the more filling you're going to, you're more full you're going to feel kind of in between meals, right? Because carbs, fats are going to be the ones coming down, where protein is going to stay pretty stagnant. Um, and then. The, that also gives us the advantage of if we have to, we can decrease protein because we do have so much. And so if you just absolutely just need to get calories down, you do have room to kind of take a little bit from protein, which is always really nice to have that option. Um, and I also find that it really helps set up refeed days as well because you don't really want to get below that 0.8. And so if we can have that 1.2, well, then we've got some nice room to bring, really bring protein down for a refeed day and really put that into carbohydrates, which is going to help with the dieting process. So protein is always set first, um, you know, just the importance of, of building muscle, maintaining muscle, you know, whether you're reversing or uh, dieting, uh, it, it's just so important to the whole process. So we always set that First, so that's that kind of first ratio. Uh, the second ratio would be fats. Um, despite what you may have heard, fat does not make you fat. Um, fat is very important to the diet uh, and to make sure that we are not getting below a certain percentage because you do tend to start to see some health issues crop up, right? Hormones um, will start to get a little uh, low. Um, fat does regulate the, a lot of hormones for you. Uh, you know, hair starts to fall out. You know. So we do start to see some issues, and typically you don't really wanna see below 20% of total calories as fats, right? So nothing below 20%. Uh, you definitely wanna keep that there. Uh, the only time you're really gonna kinda, of, or you should get that low is towards the near the end of a prep, and it shouldn't be held there for very long. Again, just because of those health reasons. So, boom, you set protein first, you set your fats at least, at least minimum 20%, but that should be, you know, 20, 25, 30% start, is starting to push it, but kind of right in that 20 to 30% range is always uh, kind of where you want to be with your fats. And then carbohydrates is kind of the most uh, manipulative one that we can manipulate. <laughs> um, and you can really kind of go across a broad spectrum with carbohydrates. Uh, so I mean, really anywhere from kind of like that 25, 30%, you know, 50, 60% um, of kind of total calories is kind of where that range can be. Uh, everyone's going to be a little bit different uh, with their carbohydrate intake. Uh, you know, some are going to have a ceiling of 200 grams. Some are going to have a ceiling of 500 grams. Uh, everyone's a little bit different depending on activity level, uh, you know, muscle mass, everything like that it's it's going to vary a little bit um, but that is going to help really fuel your workouts and your recovery and help along with the muscle building process um, as well it's the easiest one to manipulate when you diet so we always want to start you know a dieting phase with as many carbohydrates as possible uh, because that one's just easy to, to bring down uh, as we move along in the process so as you can see uh, you know, the ratios, the percentages of the macronutrient breakdown which is just going to equal whatever whatever calories that might be um, is, is quite important to the process and can make a difference. And so when it comes down to calories versus macros, well, you need to ask yourself, what is my goal right now? Do I have a specific goal of, okay, I want to lose whatever, 15 pounds? Well, you're probably going to be better off making sure that you have the proper ratios or, you know, I want to build muscle because I want, you know, my bodybuilding pro card, for example. Well, you're probably going to want to be pretty diligent, you know, for the most part with your macros so that you are making sure that you are ensuring you are fostering an environment that is optimal to building muscle, right? Um, and then especially if you, you know, are looking to start a dieting phase, well, we need to know where those ratios are, not just calories. Uh, when to just track calories? Uh, when we're maybe intuitive eating, we don't really have a you know hard specific goal that we're going for. We're just trying to live a healthier lifestyle. Um, you know, you can maybe track calories, but still making sure that you're getting your protein in and then stuff like that, and and that can make it a little bit easier for some people. So. Not again, not necessarily one versus the other. Uh, both can be utilized throughout your journey at different times in your journey and they can both have benefits to them. Um, if you have a much more specific goal that you're really working on, I'd highly recommend just tracking your macros because calories really just aren't gonna matter. Um, if you're a little bit more loose at this point in your journey um, and you just don't have anything specific at this point, feel free to just track calories and, and, and kind of mix and match. Just make sure you're not getting too little of, of one thing. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to be everything for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. If you did, again, please just hit that subscribe button. Greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to see anything answered in future videos, 
go ahead and just leave that question down below. Have a great rest of your day, guys.